Hey guys, so 8.5 dot product. So a dot product is also known as a scalar product and vector multiplication. So it's some sort of multiplication that takes direction into account because usually it's just two numbers getting multiplied, but with vectors they have magnitude and direction, right? So vector multiplication, sorry, multiplication um, looks something like this. If you have two vectors, then when you multiply them together, you just take the horizontal components, multiply, take the vertical components, multiply, and then you add that together. You can see right here in this example that it's 3 times negative 4 plus negative 5 times 1, and then you just add that together for the result, and you get negative 17. That's a scalar, right? That's a one number kind of deal. That's why it's also called a scalar product. Your end result is a scalar. So I know I already showed you the answers here, but I want to see work. <laughs> so you're going to work it out in here, and these are the answers that you should be getting for B through F. So pause and please do that. And then, unpause, and then you'll see um, right here when you have V times V, and then look here, you have the magnitude, right? So hopefully that makes sense because what is V times V? It's going to be that squared plus that squared. But then what is this? It's that squared plus that squared and then square root, right? So it's just this, this is the square root of this. This is the square root of that, right? So that's actually one of the properties that we talk about next. So the first one is the commutative property. It just means that we can multiply either way, just like we did with A and B. If you do if you, well, you did B for sure. So you'll see that these are the same answers no matter which way you multiply them, right? So that's called the commutative property. And then this one we just proved also. So V dot V equals the magnitude squared. And then this is the distributive property. It just says, okay, we could add vectors together and then take the dot product, or we can do a dot product and a dot product and add, and we get the same thing, okay? This is saying that if you multiply by a zero vector, you're going to get zero. Because, I mean, if you think about it, something times zero is zero. Something times zero is zero. You add zero plus zero, you get equals you get zero. Okay. Finding the angle between two vectors. So when you're finding the angle between two vectors, we're imagining that the two vectors are starting at the same place. And then we're finding the angle in between them. So we're going to use this on the back later. So our answers are always going to be between 0 and 180 degrees. And what's nice is the calculator, when you use cosine inverse, always gives you an answer in quadrants 1 and 2, right? So in quadrants, I'll draw it here. So this is our CST. So quadrants 1 and 4 is sine inverse and tangent inverse. But quadrants 1 and 2 are cosine inverse. So that's why we use cosine. Hopefully that helps you remember it. And the formula looks crazy, but it's really easy to remember, actually. It's just the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude of each. So if we use that formula, you're going to jot it down one more time. You're going to take the dot product on top. So here's my dot product on top. It's just semi-working it out. And then on the bottom, you take the magnitude of u, the magnitude of v, and you can actually just stop here and then just do cosine inverse of this, or you can keep going and simplify a little bit and you do cosine inverse. Make sure you're in degrees if that's what we're looking for, and usually it is. So then you have 105 degrees. Um, make sure that you can put that into a calculator and get that answer. <laughs> okay, so then we're talking about parallel versus orthogonal. Uh, vectors. So orthogonal means perpendicular. All right. So here's some pictures of parallel versus orthogonal. So parallel would be something like if they start at the same point, parallel would have to mean that if they have the same slope, they have to both go in the same direction or they go in exactly opposite directions. They make a line, right? So that would be parallel. So if you notice, if you were to like assign this like a number, right? right? Like let's say this is you know, the magnitude is 3, and then here the magnitude is like 1, <laughs> I'm just making it up, then this would be 3 times this, and that's why it says V equals something times W, so it'd be V equals 3 times um, W, actually negative 3 times W for this one, right? But for this one, 
if v was, I don't know, I'm just going to say 2, and then w was 1, this would be v equals 2 times w, right? So that's always going to be true if it's parallel. And we can like literally look at it with our eyes, I'll show you, and see if that's true. Okay, but then you also need number two. You can't just do number one, you have to do number two. Number two, you're always gonna find the, the angle in between. So obviously, if it's going the same direction, you're gonna have zero degrees in between. If it's going on opposite directions, you're gonna have 180 degrees in between. Both of these have to be true for you to say it's parallel. Okay, the two vectors are parallel. For orthogonal or perpendicular, what's gonna happen is that's not gonna, like that's not gonna work out, instead, you're going to go ahead and take the dot product, and the dot product is going to give you zero. So I'll show you why in a little bit. Um, and then, once you prove that that's true, you're going to show that the angle is 90 degrees, because if it's orthogonal, you're going to have to have a 90 degree angle. Okay? Um, and then we're just using that formula for the degrees. Okay, so let's give it a try. So let's say something like example three. So something like this. Um, are the following parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Um, so I just, I literally look at this and I can tell that this is twice as much as that, right? Like you can just tell. This is a six, that's a three, that's a two, that's a one. So yeah, if you double this, you, sorry, if you double V, you get W. So I know that I can either write it like this or I can write it like that. Either one is fine. And then, so I know, okay, this should be parallel, but I'm going to check by doing number two. Number two was, what again? Finding the angle. So you find the angle in between. So you use your formula, and then you plug in, and then you get a one. What is cosine in, uh, sorry, cosine inverse of one? Cosine inverse of one is zero. So that is zero degrees, and those are parallel. So that's my final answer, parallel. Okay, what about the second one? When I look at the second one, I look at this and I can tell right away, this is not some sort of like multiple of each other, right? So this is a three and a two. If this was a multiple of each other, if that was a three and a two, that would be a six and like a positive four, right? But it's not. So it's not parallel. I know that for sure because I can't satisfy number one right there. So instead, I think it's perpendicular. I'm going to try that. So perpendicular, what's the first step? Finding the dot product. So you find the dot product. Go ahead and find the dot product. And then you're going to check the dot product. And yeah, you get a zero. So see how it works out? So you get a zero and then we think, okay, I think this is perpendicular. Now I'm going to find the angle. So you put it in the angle formula, and then you get 90 degrees. You don't even need a calculator for these, right? Like you know cosine inverse of zero is 90 degrees because it's either zero, uh, sorry, it's either 90 degrees or 270 degrees, but we're not using 270 degrees, right? So it's always between zero and 180. So that one's perpendicular, sorry. And then that one was parallel. Sometimes it's neither, just so you know. Okay. So the next part is talking about um, decomposing a vector into two perpendicular vectors, right? So I did this. You might want to just remind yourself. I'm going to give you the formula for this. This is the only formula I'm going to give you for, I think, this whole chapter, okay? Because, you know, I want you to be able to do it, but it's okay if you don't memorize the formula. I think you can, but just in case. Basically, what we're doing is we're taking a vector, like um, vector, uh, oh sorry, we're taking a vector, here's our vector, <laughs> and then we're making it so that we have a vector one and a vector two, and we're making it so that they're like perpendicular to each other, okay? So we're doing one that's a projection of V onto W, so we're taking that, V, and then we're making it the same length, but on W, and then we're going to go ahead and do a perpendicular. So that's how we get V sub 1 and V sub 2. So we're making one vector into two vectors that are perpendicular to each other. So I have a lot of stuff here that I'm actually not going to go through about this, how this formula works out, 
but I think you can look at it and honestly I don't want the video to be too long and I'm gonna give you the formulas anyway so here are the formulas so it looks a little bit weird but I'm gonna show you on the back how that works out so it's basically gonna be the dot product of the two vectors um, and then uh, oh sorry so dot product and then um, you have your wait Oh, they're going to do, uh, oh, so it's two vectors, sorry. Um, dot product to two vectors, and then on the bottom is your um, W magnitude squared, because the first one is a projection onto W, so we want to make it like parallel to W, and then times W, the vector W, okay? So I'll show you how that works out. Once you get the first one, the second one's easy to find. It's going to be the first vector minus v sub 1, whatever you just found. So let me show you how that works. It's not as crazy as it seems, okay? So right here, we have a v and we have a w. So just so you can see how it works, it's going to be, can you see this? Yes. So let's say v is, so here's the starting point. So 1, and then 1, 2, 3. This is V. And then this is 1 and 1. 1 and, oops, 1 and 1. This is, can do that? This is W, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to make V sub 1 this length, but parallel to W. So V sub 1 is going to look like this. And then V sub 2 is the perpendicular that's going to go like that. So that's what we're doing, basically. So look at our final answer, and I'll talk about how we got there. But the final answer should be something parallel to W, because this is sitting on top of W. Isn't that parallel to that? See how it's 2 times that? So you can like check your answer that way, too. OK, okay so how does this work out? So I used my formula. Write down your formula one more time. You know how to get the dot product. Here's my dot product on top. You know how to get a magnitude. So here's my magnitude and then squared. And then times W. Notice I don't write W squared on top because that would mess me up. So that's not how it works. It's going to be the dot product on top. And then at the end, I'm going to multiply by vector W. So here's vector W, I plus J. So how would this work? Okay, let's see. This is 4 over 2. So then that's a 2, right? 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then 2 times i plus 2 times j. So 2i plus 2j. Okay? Um, and then, how do you get the second vector, the perpendicular one? You just subtract this from the original. So this is v sub 1. You just subtract it, and then you get that one. So I will give you um, both of them. I don't know. I know for sure I'll give you this one. I'm not sure if I'll give you this one. This one's like super easy, okay? So definitely I'll give you this one. I'm not sure about that. Okay, so there are your two final answers for that. Okay, and then, um, okay, so now there's something called work in physics. So in physics, the work done by a constant force, F, in moving an object from point A to a point B is going to be this, um, this formula, sorry. Um, so work is, and then we take the magnitude of the force, and then we do like a distance, okay? So what this really is, is a force vector times a distance. So this is a dot product, so it's a vector times a vector. It's still a dot product, okay? So looking at like this problem again, okay? So this is familiar to us, this girl pulling a wagon or a kid pulling a wagon. So you have a force of 50 pounds. What is that? What are you gonna say? 50 equals, what is it? And then how much work is done in moving the wagon? 100 feet, okay? Hmm, let's think about that. If the handle makes a 30 degree uh, with the ground, 30 degree angle with the ground, all right. I'm pretty sure I know what to do with the 50 pounds and the 30 degrees, but what about this? Okay, we're gonna draw a picture. So here's my awful picture. Well, actually, here's my force vector, right? So we know how to make a force vector. So magnitude times the unit vector. 
and then here's my 50 times cosine of 30. So we're used to that. We can do that. We don't know what to do with the 100 yet. All right, so there's my awful picture. She has like a really weird head right here. Um, okay, so then we need to realize that this is 100 feet. So it says moving a, a wagon 100 feet. Um, it doesn't say to the right or left. I will specify when it's to the left, I promise, because when it's to the left, your, a, your vector for AB is going to be different. Let's think about why. Okay, so then if you multiply this out, so you get like the cosine of 30 times 50 is going to be this, and then the cosine of 30 times this is going to be this, right? So root 3 over 2, and then this is 1 half, and then times 50. Okay, so this is your force vector, all right? That's your force vector, that's that. Times your distance. So your distance vector is basically from here to here. What is this vector if we go from here to here? You can just like write it. What i plus what j? You're going to the right and then you're stopping. So wouldn't that be 100i plus 0j? You know what I'm talking about? So it would look like that. So I have my force vector and then I have my distance vector. And then I literally take the dot product of those. And then I have, so when you multiply the force and then the um, in pounds and then the distance in feet it's a foot pounds okay so if you write something else if you say like work it's fine but it's supposed to be foot pounds because you're multiplying by feet and then by pounds okay um, what would be different if this was going the other direction how would that change well this would change to a negative 100 right because you're going to the left and then you're going up and down zero okay so there's this problem that we have in the book. I'm going to give you a little warning. The bell's going to ring soon, so I apologize for that, but I'm just going to keep going. So there's this problem in the book, um, and then I think it's like number 29 in the book that you're going to give a try to later. Just realize that when you have these vectors, like when you're drawing these vectors, um, you can use Sokotoa because really anytime you have like a magnitude and a magnitude and a magnitude, um, those are all sizes. So if you have a magnitude and a magnitude, you have a size and a size. You have a distance and a distance, basically. So how do you find like the third side? How do you find the angle? How do you find whatever? It's going to have to do with Sokotoa. Right? So I want you to think about this picture when you're drawing for number 29, and then, um, and then we'll try it out on the homework outline, okay? Okay, here's the last one. This is going to be your favorite slash um, not favorite because I am totally lying. But it might turn into your favorite because you're cool like that, okay? So I, I love it, honestly. Okay, an airplane flies. 400 miles per hour at, oh no, what's this? That's a bearing. So this is a bearing. And then the wind blows this many miles per hour at that bearing. Okay, what we're really doing is we're using the 400 as a speed would be magnitude, right? And then we're using this as a magnitude. This is our direction. This helps, sorry, with our direction. And this helps with our direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this situation and then we're going to get a resultant vector. So I'm going to glance to make sure that I, everything looks good. Okay, what I always do is because it's bearing, what do you have to draw first? Do you guys remember? You have to draw a vertical north-south line, okay? If you don't know where to start, you're gonna do it a little bit big and you're gonna start in the middle. But I know, just because looking at this I can tell, that I'm gonna go north and then I'm gonna go north some more. So if I'm gonna go north and north some more, then I'm gonna start down here somewhere. So let's say I start like right, let's say I start like right here. This was a little long, I'm gonna make it shorter, okay? So let's say I start right there, all right. I'm going to draw first my airplane, okay? My airplane is north 60 degrees west. So north, west is this way, 
my 60 degree angle has to touch that north-south line. So it's going to touch this. So 60 degrees is kind of big. This would be like 30 degrees. This would be 60 degrees. Okay. So I'm going to draw it a little bit long and I'll tell you why. So here is 60 degrees. Okay. This, I'm drawing a little bit long because how long is it supposed to be, this wind vector? Oh, sorry, this uh, airplane vector. This airplane vector is supposed to be 400 miles per hour. So really, that's the magnitude. That's how long it should be, 400. So it needs to be a little bit longer because the other one's 50. So I need to compensate for that. So this needs to be longer, and then the 50 is going to be shorter. Okay. At the end of my airplane vector, I'm going to draw my wind vector. I don't draw it from here. Don't be a crazy person. Don't draw it from here. Draw it from here. So from here, if I were to draw a vertical line, which uh, I'm not going to do, okay? Uh, okay, fine. I'll do it, but you have to pretend not to see it. If I do another vertical line here to draw my bearing, okay? So ignore the pink. So I'm supposed to go north, 45 degrees east. So from here, I go north, which is up here, 45 degrees east. Okay, I'm going to go in this direction to make a 45 degree angle with that north-south line. And then it's supposed to be 50, so I can't draw it super long. It should be like, you know, shorter. So I'm going to draw it shorter. So that's like 200, 100, 50 is really short, but I'm going to make it just a little longer because I can't handle it. So something like this, that is 45 degrees. Okay, that's 45 degrees. So I have to be careful here. What I'm looking for is my resultant vector. That's my resultant vector. That's what I'm really looking for. So I named it differently on this paper. I'll show you. So here's how, here's how my picture looks a little bit different. Okay. So I started here, I went 60 degrees, see that 60 degrees, and then I went northeast, 50. So I call this my V sub A, this is my airplane vector, this is my V sub W, this is my wind vector, this is my resultant vector, this is V sub R, okay? You can name them whatever you want. You can just say A, W, and R, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to name them vectors, okay? I know this is 60 degrees, and then I know that this, like in here, if I went like that, that would be 45 degrees, but um, we're going to think about that in a second, okay? Um, what I need later, what I'm going to need later is this angle right here, because if this is my answer, I'm going to need to know this angle so that I can find that bearing in the end because that's going to be something that they want to see the direction from the ground path so I'm going to need that one so from the ground where do you end up basically okay so the airplane's going this way and it gets pushed this way where do you end up okay can you guess why I drew this and why this is so important Yes, it's the positive x-axis. Every angle has to touch this, all right? So I know it says 60. I know it says 45. Are we going to use the 60 and 45? Uh, probably neither. Really, probably neither. All right. So here's how we're going to start it. So I know my resultant vector is the airplane plus the wind vector. So I'm going to do that. My resultant vector should equal, what is my airplane vector? All right, it's 400, here's my 400, cosine of, do you guys see how this would be 150 degrees? Look, look, look. So 60 plus 90, right, 150 degrees, okay? And then plus 50, 50 is my wind vector, 50 times cosine of, Oh, wait, 45, where did that come from? This, I know, I'm kidding, actually. This came from, I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to use this. This is a positive x-axis, right, from here. 
it's this angle. That's for if this is 45 up here, then this has to be 45 over here. So that's where the 45 came from. If this was 40, would this be 40? No, if this was 40, I would use 50 degrees. So it depends on where that vector touches the positive x-axis. In this case, it was a 45 degrees, okay? It is not always using those same numbers. It is almost never using the same numbers. It is almost always both different. It just happens that 45 plus 45 is 90, okay? All right, so it has this. And then I'm going to simplify, um, calculator, just put it in a calculator, don't round everything yet. <laughs> and then you're literally going to like add everything to add. So get this times 400 and then plus and then get cosine of 45, add 50, add those together to get the I's. And then do sine of 150 times 400 plus sine of 45 times 50. Make sure that you do it like carefully. And then that's going to add your J's. And then you have some number of I plus some number of J. You really have to do this yourself. Don't just count on me. You have to try it. Okay? Okay. So that is your resultant vector. So vector form I and J. Okay. B, what is the ground speed? So the ground speed is going to be this right here, um, magnitude, right? Speed is magnitude of a vector. So how do you get the magnitude? Well, you just take those values, you square them, you add them, and then you do it under a square root. So it's really important that you can do that again on a calculator. So you should pause and you should make sure that in your calculator, do not round, you just copy paste square plus copy paste square. Then you press enter and then you do a square root of the answer and then you get that many miles per hour. Do not round anything until you get a final answer. And then even when you have a final answer like this, you can't just put in point 0.1. Right? You have to put in the answer that was in your calculator to get your next answer. Okay, If you round, you will be a little off. And if your spaceship is a little off, you're going to go to the wrong planet. I'm serious. Okay, the final one is the direction. Okay, so this we're just breaking this up into magnitude, basically, and direction. So the direction, we need to find alpha. Okay, so alpha, how do you find this angle? Well, this is a vector. This is technically a vector. This vector is 0i, because it doesn't go left or right, plus some number of j, right? It's positive. It goes up here. So if we were down here, we would do 0i minus j. This is 0i plus j. So I'm going to write it as, so write this first, the angle between our resultant vector and the positive y-axis. In this case, it's the positive y-axis. So if you write those as vectors, well, actually, I wrote it as a vector here. So here's your resultant vector times, so that's a dot product, and then your positive y-axis, we can say it's just 0i plus. It doesn't matter what this is, I swear. You can put 2j, but then you have to find the magnitude of 2, so that's annoying. So I always do 0 plus, 0i plus 1j. And then if it's down, instead of positive, it's negative, I do 0i minus 1j to make life easy, okay? So that's your formula for cosine um, inverse, right? So then put it in your calculator, and then you have um, the horizontals multiplying, which gives you 0. You have the uh, verticals multiplying, which give you this number, whatever that was in your calculator. And then over, and then you have your, um, if you don't round this, you have your magnitude in your calculator. So then you do some division in your calculator with those non-rounded answers, never round. And then you find the angle. So you can find the angle, right? Just cosine inverse of the answer. And then you get 52.88. The angle itself is 52.9 degrees if we were to round to the nearest tenth. And if you rounded everything as you went, would you get this? No, you totally wouldn't. And then you'd be like, Miss Tam, it's really close. Do I get like, you know, minus one? 
or whatever, it's basically the same. And I'm like, no, it's like minus one, minus 0.5, whatever. Okay. Um, depending on how many points it is. All right. So then that's not your final answer. Sorry. Your final answer is a bearing. How do I know it's north and west? I look at the original. This angle is north, west. So north, 52.9 degrees west. Okay. So I would say this is maybe the trickiest kind of problem in the chapter, but you can do it and we're going to try it for homework in a couple days. Okay. Um, you can comment with questions if you want. All right. Good luck, guys.